Cook PTA. So most of you probably know me as a mortgage guy by day. By night I go by Joe That is my career and life coaching business. And um, just really feel like with social media, there's not enough awareness out there for parents right now. There's so many moving parts to it. And when you look at this device, this is probably one of the most polarizing things that's out there right now. A lot of beauty and a lot of bad that happens. So I want to walk you guys through about a 20 minute presentation of some things here. So today we're going to talk a little bit about a brief history of social media, kind of give you guys some numbers and some ideas of what's what's going on. Um, talk about the beauty of it, some great things, the dangers of it. We've got about eight techniques to safeguard your, you and your kids on social media that we use consistently and we've developed and I've researched. And then talk a little bit about the future of social media and do a quick Q&A. We've got about 50 slides, some will move very fast, but we'll get through it. And if you have any questions, stop me along the way. So brief history. So in 2009, this was social media. And these are just kind of the base apps right now. So you have your Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And you look at 2019, even less than 10 years, how social media exploded. And this isn't even the forefront of it, really. Uh, you've got your base apps here, but how many have heard of House Party? How many have heard of Kick? Social media is changing day by day. So there, there's so many apps out there. Have <coughs> you heard of Musical.ly? Musical.ly is now TikTok. I didn't even know that, and that changed. And that's a an app where you do music videos, 15 seconds increments, and post them. Kick is a messaging app, and House Party, you can do video group chat together. And there's a lot of amazing stuff that goes on behind the scenes with bullying and things, so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. But it's amazing to see this, this transition in social media. It's only getting bigger. So some current statistics I think that'll blow your mind. Facebook, we're right now 1.8 billion active users, a billion active users on Instagram. Snapchat, 191 million users, and 500 million active users on TikTok. And one of the big apps is YouTube, which you don't hear. I'm watching YouTube videos, I'm watching Jake Paul. Um, 1.9 billion active users on YouTube right now. There's 5 billion videos watched per day. It's, it's mind boggling. 40 minutes average watch time for kids, 300 hours of video uploaded each minute, and 5 billion plus videos have been shared. Um, since 2018, since the end of 2018. It's a lot of, uh, lot of content out there, some good and, and some bad. YouTube for uh, kids, there's YouTube for kids app. Um, this is a good thing for kids, because what I see happening is a lot of parents give their kids their phone and they go right to YouTube. But there is a YouTube for kids app, if you didn't know, some of you might know. Um, there's no interactive feature, such as the ability to chat or post videos, which is nice, so you can't bully. Um, you can turn off search and set a time limit for your kids to be on social media. A couple of little things that I don't like is the app runs ads. And this is where some of that Momo challenge stuff, and there was a video where somebody posted something between a Nintendo video um, to commit suicide. But we'll get into that, into the dangers. Uh, but there is a portal to the main YouTube service, which I don't like either, so kids can figure it out. They're very good at figuring things out and get right to the regular YouTube and, and see things. Uh, right now, US adults right now, we spend on average 142 minutes per day on social media, believe it or not. And for me, it's probably double that since I run two businesses, but this is the general average right now. Uh, for a first smartphone for kids right now, this is mind-boggling to me because 10.3 years is the average age of a kid getting a smartphone like this right now. I had Nintendo, I had Nintendo like age 10 or 11. So, uh, and we got our daughter a smartphone when she turned 10 only because we felt because of all the dangers out there and the craziness, we thought it was a good thing for her to be in contact with us. And of course, she found a lot of apps and figured out her way to find things out. And then by age 11.43 years is the average age he gets her first social media app. Average user right now has about seven and a half social media apps on their phone. Some kids have 11, 12, 13. And here's a graph right here, what teens are doing. So what your teens are doing right now. Uh, most of the time is spent on YouTube, Instagram, and Snapchat. Kids don't like Facebook that much. They're watching the YouTube videos. That's 85% of the time they're basically saying they use YouTube. And Instagram is up there, kind of behind it a little bit, 72%. And what's interesting is 45% of the teens say they're online almost constantly. So your kids are basically on the weekends, they're on their phones, they're on their devices almost constantly. And this is a stat from the Pew Research Center, almost nine hours per day. I couldn't believe this when I saw this. Nine hours per day, kids are on the phone, and you're saying, oh my gosh, that's impossible. But we have some cousins of ours, and to basically validate this, 
I started watching some of their stuff on Snapchat and Instagram, and I noticed they're up at six o'clock in the morning, posting a snap, going to the bus stop, on the bus, posting videos, at lunchtime, after school on the bus ride home, a couple hours a night, and when I thought about it, it's probably close to maybe seven, eight hours, so it might be a little bit high, but if you think about it, that's a lot. And I've seen that from a lot of kids. Wait, I thought you said initially the 140 or so minutes, was that just not kids? That's that's, that's, in, that's, that's, that's adults, in general. Yeah, that's in general, that's adults, yeah. So, and that's staggering when you think about it. Yeah, nine hours per day. And I've you know been away on trips and stuff, and my wife and I have a lot of things going on, and we have seen that through our kids' history where sometimes they're on their devices when we're traveling. So it's almost about nine hours per day. So you're thinking, okay, what's the law out there for kids right now? So the law is it's illegal for commercial websites and apps to allow children under the age of 13. So how are all our kids getting on social media? Well, you, have, you can have verifiable parental consent, and we do that through Instagram for our daughter. She does have Instagram. We monitor and we get into that. But there is a children's online privacy protection rule, which is called COPA, on the FTC website, website that actually explains this, uh, that you have to be 13. But there are a lot of kids out there that are well under the age, and parents don't know. Now, the beauty of social media, there's a lot of great things that we see. Uh, this brother and sister reunited after 65 years, and this was found out by a seven-year-old boy who just did a Facebook search on his own and found them. He was, uh, I guess, a uh, landlord's son and did a search and found them. Just like that, a seven-year-old kid did that. That's amazing what they can do. Um, organ donors. You can list your organ donor information on Facebook. It's a beautiful thing. People are finding donors. Um, I worked at the Red Cross at times, so there's social media donations. You know, people receiving help they need. You see the birthday donations now on uh, Facebook. You've got a lot of GoFundMe's out there. Uh, so charitable organizations are receiving a lot of uh, assistance. And at the Red Cross, when I was there at one point, uh, people who were victims of the Haiti earthquake were actually tweeting to some of our operations centers saying, hey, here's where I'm at, and we're able to find them, which was amazing. Um, social media helping people, a lot of people have been posting about suicide. and. As a coach, I actually helped somebody. Somebody actually reached out to me. They didn't have my phone number. This was about two years ago. They reached out to me through Facebook Messenger and said, hey, I'm driving right now. I'm driving to the Delaware Memorial Bridge. I'm going to jump off the bridge. And I got their phone number, and they connected me through, um, through their phone, talked them down, coached them out, got them the help they needed. So that is amazing. What if we didn't have Facebook Messenger? What would happen to that person? And so that's the beauty of social media. So we able to help that person right now. They're divorced, they're happy, they're moving on, they've got a new job, they're in a great spot in their life. So those things are really what social media can do for us. Now we get to the dangers of it. So obviously there is bullying that occurs through messages on each app, and it's just growing more and more because messaging apps are coming up quite a bit. And 59% of teens have been cyberbullied right now. 25% of teens received an unwanted image, pornographic image, violent image, 16% actually receive physical threats. I'm going to kill you, I'm going to come beat you up. Uh, about 10% ages 12 to 17 skip school at some point in the year because of bullying, because they felt they didn't just didn't want to go to school, they were afraid. And this is uh, a really staggering stat for me. 90% of teens who have seen online bullying have actually ignored it. And this is from the Pew Research Center, again, a very reputable source. And I actually put this to the test, and just through Roblox and some of the games that are out there right now, um, my daughter and I were having a chat a couple weeks ago. She said, oh yeah, this kid was being bullied, so I helped him out. I said, why didn't you say anything to me? You know, oh, I just didn't think anything of it. And that's what's happening. 90% of teens who have seen online bullying just ignore it and think it's, it's normal. That's very, very scary. Um, there's a lot of human trafficking, believe it or not, that's out there right now. So every 30 seconds, a person becomes a victim of human trafficking. Um, there's a lot of sex trafficking out there. There are perpetrators that will send a friend request. Um, They'll follow their victims' accounts, and I actually see it on all my business accounts. I get a lot of fake accounts. I get about seven or eight Facebook friend requests a day, and a lot of these are fake accounts coming from Costa Rica, somewhere, or wherever, and even on uh, Instagram. I've seen somebody duplicate a friend's account, look just like it, and I thought it was them following me again. And here's an interesting fact. Police in Fresno, California in 2017 indicated that about every 16-year-old girl was approached by a sex trafficker. Uh, There's a population of Fresno, California of about 400 and some thousand people. So that to me is my mob with that. And, and that's the area where there's a lot of trafficking going on in California because of the border. But almost every single girl was drunk through uh, sex trafficking. In 2017, 
Can you all remember the story? Now this is the danger of it, you know, and again, uh, 410 billion is in charitable donations in 2017 alone. And obviously this is one of the biggest fraud cases of all time. And I see this, I see this quite a bit. Um, and what happens is, and you see this a lot, real account pages are mimicked on Facebook. Always wanna look for the verified badge. When you see a company or a donation or something like that, look and see if there's something verifiable there or linked to the website. Some will actually have um, funny links like YouTube. I've seen it where YouTube is spelled Y-O-U-T-T, -T. you know, somebody mistypes something, it'll go to a fake site that looks just like YouTube. Uh, donation buttons are on the page, and even, like I said, fake websites, or message function pop-up apps where you get into it and a message pops up says, hey, donate, or reach out to me. And that's how they can hack and steal information. And most charitable fraud is through veteran donations or disaster relief. Instagram has about 95 million fake accounts or accounts run by bots. There are what's out there called social bots where there's all automation that's created, where they actually create these dummy accounts or fake accounts, and they follow people to get statistics on. And I, I find a lot of followers that I can tell are just fake because they'll post something on my Instagram account that says, great job, and it's the same thing, week after week after week, and there's no other dialogue other than just great job or something like that. And Facebook deleted 583 million fake accounts in the first three quarters of 2018. That's a lot. Remember this? The Momo Challenge? Have you guys heard of the Momo Challenge? Some of you might not have. I called it the Gaga Challenge. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> but this is this is real it's scary. It's creepy image. Um, and this is basically what it was. It appeared in uh, embedded YouTube videos. So YouTube can run ads. So you've probably seen it where you click skip ad. So they actually did this on YouTube uh, for kids. And popped up in WhatsApp messages. WhatsApp is a Facebook messenger. Um, and the challenge urged kids to do destructive things or basically kill themselves. Um, and now because of this, you have copycats. Now there was a lot of stuff going on that, oh, this was just fake. Um, I did actually go out and probably watch probably 20 or 30 different YouTube videos where they actually tracked these people down and they actually got somebody to send them through WhatsApp Messenger, this Momo channel. So it did actually exist, but it kind of went away and they come and go. Um, video clips, and there was a suicide video clip that was actually cut into a YouTube for kids video where this was a clip during a popular Nintendo game and I actually watched it. The mother posted this on Instagram and Pinterest or whatever. Um, so what happened was there was a video, it was all the animation, and all of a sudden a guy came on and he goes like this, to you know, be public and make yourself public, do this or do this, but go like this, basically cutting your throat. And it looked like it flowed with the rest of the video. And it was amazing to see how this guy just popped in. So they must have done it with a blue screen or what have you, but I'm sitting there watching it like, well, this is a, video, where is that? And all of a sudden just popped in like nothing. I didn't even realize it. And I had to watch it three or four times and say, wow, that's hard to believe that it, it looked like it was part of the game. So let's get into how do we really safeguard your kids at this point? Because we know there's a lot of good, there's a lot of bad. We've come up with our family with eight different things that we actually uh, do in our family. Communication. Monitoring, there's monitoring software out there. Learn. You've got to learn, and we'll go through all these. Passwords, privacy settings, set rules, stop the blame game, and then you as the parent. So communication. You've got to have regular talks with your kids on what they're engaging in. I mean meaningful conversation. Because I do see a lot of parents, and I hear a lot of parents out there, so oh, what are you watching today? I just watched a couple of YouTube videos, and that's the dialogue, and everybody goes about their way. We have regular conversations with our kids. Okay, what did you see in that Jake Paul video? my son will come up and say, I was doing Roblox and was watching this, or I saw the 3 a.m. challenge. I'm like, 3 a.m. challenge? I'm like, oh, okay, that's nothing. And a week later, he keeps saying, oh, we're gonna get up at 3 a.m. I'm like, what exactly is a 3 a.m. You know, challenge? So I started talking more to him and found out it was all kinds of scary clown stuff and doing things, so we started blocking those videos. But that was on YouTube for kids. Can't even believe that. But also, too, I mean, you saw that stat 90% of the time kids don't talk about the bullying. Ask them to tell you when someone is teasing them or harassing them. And we have that open conversation with the other kids. What's going on? Have you seen any bullying? And I've you know, watched a lot of videos and things like that. But also to talk to them about the consequences of misusing it. Because they're, you know, they're kids out there bullying and doing bad things. And they can get in trouble. And also to your online reputation. You know, talk to your kids now about what they're posting. Because when I, when I look at it, my philosophy is, and I create a lot of videos and content out there, my grandkids are going to see this stuff that I'm posting on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. What are they going to think of me? Are they going to think I'm a nut? Or what are they going to think of me? How would they think of me? Even probably my great grandkids. All this stuff is going to be out there forever. When you're creating all this content and all these posts, it's out there. 
you find it. People hack into sites and they pull up a lot of different content and it's, it's there and you thought it was gone. So you gotta really be careful with that. So communication is key. Uh, monitoring, get to know your kids' habits. Who are they associating with? Um, what are they doing? I actually uh, was talking to uh, a parent up in Philly and they said, oh yeah, I sent my kid over to a new friend's house. Have you met the parent? No. You sent your kid over to the parent's house. Now, I'm not disrespecting any parents or anything like that, but wouldn't you want to kind of find out a little bit more about the family first? Find out what the habits are? <coughs> what are they doing? What are they watching? Uh, what are they posting online? I monitor our daughter's stuff every week. Every Sunday, I grab her phone, I look through history, I look through things, see what she's posting. I follow her accounts and make sure she's not posting anything unusual or anything bad. Like I said, reviewing their accounts once a week. And you gotta advise your kids, you must be connected to them on these sites. I mean, to me, your kids shouldn't be putting stuff out there you have no clue about it. You should be connected to them. It's very easy to do that, follow them, and connect with them on, on all these apps. So, the biggest thing is YouTube right here. So my YouTube page is right here. There's actually a feature on YouTube uh, for history. If you click on this history button, you can see all the, um, all the videos that your kid has watched. So I do this regularly with Gavin because he's on his Kindle on YouTube for kids. There's a history button, so you just click on the home right here, and history's right here, and I go through and kind of see what, what he has out there. And I've seen some of this, that's how I saw the 3 a.m. challenge, so I saw some other scary clown type videos, and I said, how do you get into this? And we had the conversation, and he said, oh, I just clicked on this video, clicked on that, and went down a rabbit hole. So we started putting you know, the parental controls in place and blocking certain videos. But YouTube is obviously one of the biggest apps the kids are always on, so make sure there's the, you find out the history and you can easily see what's going on on their, on their history. Monitoring software that's out there. Oops. All right. um, there is a software called Zip that one of my friends has actually used. Um, gives you visibility and limits your child's screen time and activity. You can set all different kinds of parental controls. There's instant updates on online searches. You get alerts on porn, drugs, weapons, suicide type stuff, updates on apps used. Uh, you can instantly and remotely turn off the internet on your child's devices. Now there's a cost $59.88 per year, you can do it monthly, it's honestly not that bad. But I use, um, we have Norton antivirus, so I just kind of sync up with Norton. So you can do some time tracking, scheduling, same kind of thing, filtering for your kids, all the monitoring capabilities on Apple and Android, and it's $49 a year for 10 devices, so that's not bad. We do Kindles, you can do the iPhones, Android phones, or whatever. But uh, monitoring software is really good too, because especially we're all very busy, we're all doing a lot of things, and it's nice to be able to have stuff and go in and actually review what's going on and even get alerts. You've also got to learn. Um, I see a lot of parents, and I was like this a couple years ago until I started educating myself, because social media is a big thing. It's not going away. It's only growing and getting bigger, and it's every day there's multiple apps, thousands of apps being developed, some don't survive. But you gotta educate yourself on what social media is about. Use Google and YouTube. I mean, I YouTube everything. How do I do this? How do I, you know, put a new latch on the door? How do I, you know, clean the stain off the shirt? But I Google what's going on with WhatsApp, and you can see instructional videos are out there that show you the messenger type stuff. Join online groups. Mr. Um, Rytel, yes. I have to just say something sure. fun. So we were in a meeting today, and one of the meeting participants said that they YouTube how to do a certain math problem. Yeah. So some of you may have done that with. I do that quite a bit. <laughs> it's, it's just it's just easier. I know it's probably cheating a little bit, but sometimes you gotta you know you gotta figure out some stuff. It saves time. But don't always buy into the media. I have a lot of friends in the media. Um, I know a lot of media people, but sometimes they blow up the media stories quite a bit. Do your research first, because everybody gets on the kick. Oh my gosh, there's these challenges. There's this. There's that out there. But do a little bit of research because then everybody starts posting so much stuff, and it just wrong stuff blows up. And follow influencers as well too. Um, there's a lot of good influencers out there. So I don't know if any of you guys have heard of this guy, Gary Vaynerchuk, VaynerMedia. He's kind of a motivational guy, um, started a wine business. Um, follow him because he does a lot of social media work. I mean, that's basically a big part of his business. He helps celebrities and things. I follow him because I learn about what's up and coming in apps and all different kinds of things. Like he will test out, you know, TikTok or Musical.ly, whatever it was. He's, there's LinkedIn ads out there on LinkedIn. So I follow him and I get regular updates so I know kind of what's going on in social media. Um, some bad people. Jake Paul. I follow Jake Paul because I kind of want to see what's going on. My daughter's talked about Jake Paul quite a bit and some of the videos she's watched and there's some things I don't like about him so I kind of follow him to see what's going on so I'm in the know as to, as to what's happening. Um, I 
also follow this. Uh, these are uh, Poon Girls in Germany. They're on TikTok. They have like some 30 million followers on the TikTok app. Um, they do a lot of different videos. There have been some not so great videos, um, but I follow them as well since our daughter's on there just to kind of see what's what's going on, keep in the know. Um, and then I have a, a site on Facebook as well. It's just, I just started this. It's called Social Media Awareness for Parents. Um, I have a couple parents in there right now. It's starting to grow a little bit. But what I'm doing out there is I'm posting all kinds of updates and stuff. And it's a great area for parents to say, hey, you know, what's going on in this app? Or, if you have a question, you can post a question and I'll respond and answer to it. And I post regular updates as I know what's happening with social media, if there's a new app out there. For example, there's a dialogue that went on about WhatsApp, so I kind of explain to parents what it actually is and the dangers of messaging there and how you can delete messages and hide different things. So there are a lot of other Facebook groups out there, but this is something I just started, so feel free to join. It's free. Um, there's a lot of good info that I put out there on a regular basis. Passwords. I have our kids' passwords. You really should have your kids' passwords. Make sure they have a strong password too, because when our daughter joined a couple sites, it was all like Kaylee one two three one two three. Very easy. Um, I mean, there's some passwords for various sites and stuff, but passwords should vary for each site. Make it vary. I know it's a pain, but it's much easier because the people get hacked and want to have the same password for every single site. And I got hacked uh, last year. My website got hacked by somebody in Russia because my password was similar to my Gmail because my Gmail got hacked. And that's how I started. I ran a script and did that and basically took down my website for 72 hours. Um, so now I vary all my, my passwords and all different kinds of things and so far so good. Uh, privacy settings. Each site has the ability to keep your profile private, only the people they know. Review the privacy settings once a month. I do look at my daughter's phone, like I said, every Sunday for about 10, 15 minutes while I'm drinking coffee. I look at the privacy settings. Educate yourself on the privacy settings. Like for example, this is Instagram, one of the most popular sites. Up in the wheel thing up here, there is the uh, privacy setting, and it's very simple account privacy. And you can set your kid's account private, so it's only people that um, they can approve. And you guys have done that with Instagram, where it's like somebody's going to follow you, you have to approve it. And that's what you can actually uh, do for your kids. Set rules. Establish a clear set of rules with your kids. Hold your kids accountable when they break rules. Um, you know, look. I, mean, I, I try to be a good parent, and I don't like to be the, the bad cop, so, but we still establish rules, so when our kids don't do good in school, um, their devices go away. Um, we have a, a ground rule that, you know, I have A's and B's, guess what? Your phone's going away for a limited time. It's rough, it's tough, I don't like it. I'd rather be the good parent, but you have to do some things. And, you know, our, our kids have done some, some things where they've seen some videos, we've taken their devices away. They don't like it, they get frustrated, but this holds them accountable to it. We need to all do much more of this. And, I'm not saying I'm perfect at all. I fell at this a lot. But there also is a Family Online Safety Institute site called FOSSI.org where there's actually contracts you can write with your kids. Where you can say you agree to do this on social media and do that. And you can have them sign it. You can do it. And you can review it um, if you want to go to that extreme. Some parents that I coach do do stuff like that. Um, but it's out there. There's a lot of guidelines and do's and don'ts and helpful tips out there as well. I do think, though, I hear this a lot, and I was actually in Atlantic City the other day. We do have to stop the blame game. And I don't mean to knock all of us at all, but I was down in Atlantic City a couple days ago and heard a parent like knocking Mark Zuckerberg and knocking all these social media people and Amazon. Everybody's saying, oh, this is crazy, they're doing all this. Um, and it's because we don't feel we have control over the social media realm. Yes, they have to be accountable as well. And what Facebook's been doing all the privacy settings, that's very, very bad, and they should be held accountable. But let's face it, when you think about the algorithms of Facebook and all this stuff, all this stuff's out there. The algorithm is working because this is what we all want to see. This is what the kids are actually researching and seeing. So if nothing's broken with the algorithm, they start to show those videos because the kids say, oh, clown video, let me see that, let me see that. And then it goes to the other kid and they Snapchat about it or they go on the house party and do a group video and that's what happens. And all of a sudden, that's why you're seeing all those bad news because these are things we like to see. But as parents, I feel like we do have to step up our game and be more accountable more, and be more responsible for our kids. And it's all about you, again. Set the example for your kids. I mean, I've done this myself and I'm guilty of it, but I've seen parents when they're driving, they're doing this and the kids are in the back seat. I drove from uh, Northern Virginia to um, Delaware a couple times a week. I've seen people read books, newspaper, shave, eat. It's unbelievable what I've actually seen. And they've had babies in the back seat of the car. So I really believe it all starts with us. You guys set the right example. And 
like I said, I run through businesses, I'm very busy, my phone's ringing, and I failed at it, but you have to sometimes make sure you put that phone down and set the right example. And as I said earlier, I asked you something, am I setting a solid example for my kids? What are my grandkids gonna think? What are my, you know, the rest of my family gonna think when I post all this stuff out there when I'm doing it? Am I setting the right example? And I think it starts with us, we set the good example, our kids will be better off. So here's a um, future social media, and I think we'll probably end here. Here's what I think is going to happen in social media. I think you're gonna have a lot of uh, niche apps that are out there, like no longer one size fits all, and Facebook has dropped a little bit in um, user growth, um, as well as Snapchat. I think you're gonna see a lot of things where like somebody has a site for you know roses and the flower gardens and things like that, like the Lulu sites. I think you're gonna see more of those, because if you think about it, who remembers you know, AOL, love at AOL, things like that in the past, or the dating sites. Now there's all these you know, niche sites that have been out there, Christian sites, Catholic sites. I think social media is gonna to get to that point where it's no longer gonna be all this one size fits all, like Instagram, there's gonna be different types of sites for pictures and things that's down the road. We're gonna see more virtual reality, we see it in the mortgage business with a lot of apps, we're gonna the goggles, and I was at a convention where you can actually do a virtual tour of a house now. Um, messaging, I think, is gonna to continue to grow. Like Kick is out there right now, WhatsApp is still growing in popularity, and it's easier for kids because they love it, because it's all secure, because on WhatsApp, you can actually hide all the display, you can hide all the messages, and for Snapchat, for example, your snap goes away in 24 hours. So the kids like it because it doesn't stay out there forever in front of everything. Audio is gonna be good. We know there's Alexa out there, but I think there's gonna be a lot of different audio apps that are gonna be coming, what they are, I don't know, but I think we're gonna see a much bigger span in audio. There's an app out there called Anchor where you can do a podcast from the site and you can actually send messages to people through audio. And I think audio is gonna um, grow particularly. Um, so that's that's really it. I wanted to really give you guys a little bit of what's going on out there and some tips. Um, maybe we can send this to the folks this presentation as well. Yeah, if, yeah. if you're okay with that. Yeah, absolutely. So you have it. Um, like I said, I've got the Facebook site out there. You feel free to reach out to me. Most of you might know me. If not, you can get in contact with me very easily. I'm happy to just want to keep it safe. Yeah. But what um, questions do you guys have? And that's a lot in a short, <laughs> short time. Okay, so I've never even heard of YouTube. Do you recommend it or not? Because it sounds like I've heard a lot of negative things about it. It's it's good. I mean, there's always going to be dangers with sites no matter what. Kids are always going to figure out stuff. They're curious. They're going to figure yeah. stuff out. I mean, it's better than regular YouTube because you can set good. limits on it. Um, but there are ads that they run on it. And that's how the Momo Challenge was out there. That's how that Nintendo video was out there. So there's really no catch-all. There's probably never going to be a site that's going to be so foolproof. But it does limit a lot of things. And I do like it better than YouTube. But also, too, like I said, you can find a portal like Adam did through getting to the regular YouTube on his Kindle device. So that happens, but there's always gonna be danger, but I think it's much, much better than the regular YouTube because it hides a lot of crazy stuff. Can I add to that? So I found YouTube for kids last year, and um, I mean, I feel like it's just like anything else that you have to monitor it. Yeah. Um, but I noticed with YouTube kids, I mean, it'll blur the lines between like what might be appropriate for like a five-year-old versus like a 10-year-old. There's a yeah. big difference. You know, so, but yeah. But I'm sure the algorithm has a lot to do with that. Yeah. I was just wondering, I'm a YouTube alcoholic. He's like a hardcore addict. So. Yeah. And even five on there. But like, you know, the thing is, again, it just goes to monitoring. I mean, we have to do monitoring. And it's, I know it's a pain. I hate doing it. I don't like it. But it's something I feel like I have to protect my kids with. And it's only going to grow even more. And hopefully there'll be better monitoring devices out there. And I really do hope, you know, the, uh, Social media titans will, act, uh, titans will actually do a lot of good stuff out there and put more privacy, but let's face it, they haven't yet. So in that kids YouTube app, uh, YouTube app, you said you can see history. Right. And set settings. Yes. What else are good things to, well, to utilize? Yeah, I think the history, because seeing the history is great, and you can do it on regular YouTube as well too. I think history, because you, you can't really erase that. Right. Um, and you can see probably in the last 30 days of what, what they've actually watched. So I just kind of go through and see, okay, what he's watched, and I'll pick a random video, and then there's a clown ad in the middle or something, or whatever it is. I haven't seen the Momo Challenge in there, but I've seen other kind of scary movie ads, uh, because at one point he came up to me a couple weeks ago and said, Dad, who's Jason Voorhees? And I was like, Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th? I'm like, are you kidding me? He said, oh yeah, it was in a video on YouTube for kids. So we recorded it. But again, it's, it's you're never gonna catch all this stuff, and people are gonna find a way, it's just like back, they're gonna find a way to put skimming devices and ATM machines or gas machines and 
we just have to police it as best we can. But I, I report a ton of stuff every week that I see, probably more than anybody. But to me, it's like I feel like I have a duty to police all this stuff. But it's never going to be perfect. It's a lot. <laughs> but I don't feel like there's also a big, you know, sort of catch-all out there. So I'm hoping starting a social media group will help where people can post questions like that and, and get answers and things, and other people will do the same. So just try to catch as much as, as you can. seen many that there are some some sites that don't exist anymore uh, I haven't really seen a lot but what people have done yeah. is they'll do like Facebook F-A-C-E-E -E, like uh -huh. it's easy to type one of those things yeah and it'll point to a, a very bad site um, you know, like for example White House you think whitehouse.com right uh -huh. it points to the White House the porno site whitehouse.org right so exactly yeah. you're like wow that's great but whitehouse.org is or whitehouse.gov is the, is the site but it's very clever how they do it. And I saw, like I said, YouTube, Y-O-T-T, -T, it's easy to type the double T, and it leads to a bad site. And it led to something that looked like YouTube, but you can kind of tell, okay, some of those graphics didn't look right. Okay. The trained eye, you know, you can tell, but just skimming it, you're like, wow, it looks really good. It's amazing what people do. I think this was great because yeah. a couple months ago when we had Josh Wilson here, he was kind of talking about the big picture and especially, you know, it, as um, you know, someone working for the FBI. And this is really now honing in on the social media piece of it. So I think yeah. this was really informative great. and really helpful. Yeah, I know there's a, a lot of nasty stuff in there, but I'd rather bring it out and say this is what's going on, guys. I mean, this is this is the reality, and, and I see it every day. I mean, I, I get, you know, my videos. I mean, I, I get blasted. I get really bad comments and stuff, and I take it with a grain of salt, but I just simply report it and block the person, and like I said, on Instagram, probably 20 or 30 various fake accounts I get in a day, I look at that are following me. Facebook, I get seven or eight requests, and I can tell they're, they're not fake, or somebody's duplicating stuff, so. On a positive note about videos, we are having a um, film festival in May, and our kids are producing some fantastic videos. I saw one today. Um, it's mainly fourth and fifth graders, but it's um, with the video crew from two of the classrooms, and it was a video about our music program, and it was really, really well done. Just the nice. editing, and so it's really going to be fun to see these videos if you come out to film festivals. Yeah, it's great.